War games, serious. World War II war games, even more serious. Well, unless you're playing Memoir 44, which is kind of serious, but also kind of fun. Um, I'm going to talk about a different kind of war game. Uh, this isn't a normal dudes on a map kind of game. Oh no, we're not putting little cubes or little soldiers out here. We're putting trucks. Trucks to supply your army. That's right. This is a logistics game. Uh, set in World War II and it is 1944 Race to the Rhine by Phalanx Games out of Poland. The cover is gorgeous. Um, it has uh, green, yellow and blue for the three commanders. That's uh, is it green? It has three colours on it anyway. It has uh, uh, you know, a nice cover and we have one represents Montgomery or Monty. Uh, then the white represents Bradley and the blue represents Patton. So there we have the three players because this is a one to three player game. Uh, it has a nice little truck on the front. The box is mighty heavy too. So the game uh, splits into, into uh, fairly straightforward turns. You take two actions. Um, and those actions are all listed on a card. There's an advanced version as well, which lets you use airborne units. Um, so if you're not playing the advanced, you can just look at the top sort of four options. Yeah. Take trucks, take supplies, move corpse, that kind of thing. Um, and what you do with these actions is, is you're trying to move your army corps. So you've got wooden cubes on, on the map and they represent entire entire armies. Yeah, this is not at a unit level. And they move forward and you'll need to spend gasoline or petrol uh, to move them forward. Um, and when you do that, you flip a card. And this card is from your own personal deck. Um, and it'll either be something like black market where you can exchange food or captured uh, supplies where you get ammo or weapons or that kind of thing. Um, and if you ever can't defeat somebody, uh, like you pull a card and you've not got no ammo, then you have to fall back. Um, and the game is won one of two ways. One, you get one of your army corps across the Rhine at the top of the board and can trace a continual supply line of tokens from that unit to your home base. Uh, if you can't do that, then uh, you don't win. The other way is if all the German counters are placed and nobody's crossed the Rhine, whoever has the most medals wins. And you can get medals by capturing certain towns or giving up food when you get the appropriate card. Um, so after you've taken your actions, what happens then is you'll place one of the uh, uh, Axis tokens. Uh, it's a different number depending on how many people play the game, but essentially you'll put one down. And they start from up at the Rhine, and they follow the same rules as your own supply. They have to trace a continual line, so you can't just randomly place one halfway down the board. But you can place them in the most inconvenient place for your opponent, such as blocking off any easy routes because some of the towns on the board are fortified, which means you need to spend an ammo as well uh, instead of, sorry, you need to spend an ammo as well as the initial gas you spent to move forward. Uh, and some of the towns have uh, axis flags printed on them. So what happens is when you come across one of those flags or one of the tokens, is instead of drawing from your own deck, you draw from an elite deck and you'll be fighting the Panzer Division or whatever, and you'll need a lot more stuff. Because combat is essentially abstracted down to, you pull a card, have you got what you need on the card? So have you got two ammo and a gas, for example, for fighting one of the Panzer Divisions? If you have, great, you get that, and you'll get a medal. Most, at least quite a few of the um, elite cards have uh, medals associated with them. So if you beat them, you get a medal. Instead of placing a actual token, if there is no friendly court, Corps, cause. If there's no friendly army next to uh, one of the supply tokens, then instead of placing the token, you can 
counter-attack and remove that token. That will then more than likely break the other player's continual line up to the top. Um, so that's it. However, the higher up you use the units, you'll need to then uh, get them multiplied because if they're spending gas and ammo fighting, they'll soon quickly run out. And how you do that is you place trucks. Uh, these trucks go between occupied area, uh, liberated areas. Sorry. So if you want to move supplies from your home base, let's say home base. If you want to move supplies from your uh, starting base or whatever you want to call it, you know you can put the supply. You've loaded the supplies from the um, from the board with one of your actions. The other action would be to put trucks down, and you can then move up to five trucks where. You put the, where you've put the trucks down. So if you put two trucks down which, at your starting level, you can move five goods forward. Uh, it sounds more complicated than it is. It takes a little grasp because when you've put trucks down, that's it. You can't then move stuff, more stuff along that line. But essentially it's put trucks down, move stuff. And if you have an army core there, you can load stuff onto the army car just to free action. It's essentially you're forming a logistics chain to your units that are liberating uh, enemy territory. That's why this is a, a logistics game. You, you're racing to cross the Rhine, but you can't do that without supplies. So that's what will happen then. And when you take the last truck from the supply, because you start with six, but it won't, uh, and you'll have a maximum si hand size that you can have of trucks, but you're going to want to keep moving supplies, so you're going to put trucks out, you're going to put more and more trucks out. You might even use both actions. I mean, if you've leveled up to level three um, and you can put four trucks out, you can get two actions. You could move supplies with the first four trucks and then do another four, and then you'll move yeah, up to eight squares. It's going to take you both actions, but that can supply your unit at the front, which you might need to fight the elite Germans that you're encountering, because they'll creep down the board. So if you hang around trying to get supplies, they're going to come further and further down, making your track, uh, your progress to the Rhine uh, more difficult. And of course, the more tokens come out, the less time you have, because those tokens are a timer. You don't reach the Rhine before the last one goes out. It's down to medals. Who wins? So that that's that. Um, but when, when the last one's taken, the game goes into a supply check interface, as it, as it charmingly puts. Which, again, if you read the rules, it sounds complicated, but it, it's fairly simple. All the trucks come out, back off the board into the supply. Everybody levels up. Um, the supply area, area at the bottom of the board, where you can get to goods from, is restocked. Uh, and then you carry on. So it's, it's pretty simple. But sometimes in the game, you're going to want to not take those trucks because you don't want the other person to be able to take uh, as many trucks. Or, more importantly, one of the things that happens when you take the last truck, as well as the trucks coming back and the supplies being loaded, is any unit you have out must be given food. If it has no food, it's grounded. It's out of action until you can supply food to it. And that can be a right pain if your unit is all the way up there at the top, has one food or no food, takes it off, and then it's out of action. You've got to then get your supply chain up there to get it food, and you might want to be getting ammo up there, but you're wasting one of your five resources you can ship with the trucks on food instead. So that's, that's the game in a nutshell. You uh, move your units forward, you supply them, the, Jer uh, the Jerry's, <laughs> politically correct there. The Axis forces come down the board. Uh, whoever crosses the Rhine first is an automatic winner. Um, if you don't, whoever's got the most medals. And at the end of the game, every five ammo, ammo units, which is printed on the card, worth of Germans that you've defeated is also worth a medal. So that's uh, 1944 Race to the Rhine. So 1944 Race to the Rhine is a gorgeous looking game. There's another chance to look at the box, uh, as you can see. That is pretty special looking. I do like it. The rest of the board is equally well laid out. 
The lines depicting which way the force has moved can look a little bit cluttered, but it's very easy to read. The wooden cubes uh, for the Army Corps have got nice stickers on them. Uh, and all the art is essentially pretty much reasonable to the period and very nice. So no complaints there. Um, there's a few interesting translations because like a lot of games recently, this has come out of Poland. Um, Poland seems to be on fire when it comes to, to making uh, quality board games. Uh, there seems to be some translation issues in the rule book, but mostly I have to say the rule book is very good as pictures explaining some of the rules. Uh, the weirdest translation is supply check interface. That's, that's got to be a uh, no literal translation from Polsky. It has to be. Because essentially all it is is uh, it's an event that happens on the truck somewhere and it's just restock or something. You know, or um, there should be some other name for it. I mean, right now on camera, I can't think of a name for it, but I just call it re restock or, or something like that. It sounds, it makes it sound really complicated. Um, other than that though, there isn't a single complaint about this game in terms of components. Um, long term, it might suffer a bit. I'm not sure um, how much replayability it's got after a while. You could probably play it out fairly quickly. Um, and also Bradley suffers a bit because he, in the middle of the three, um, generals because he has no um, forward supply bases or limited supply bases as they call where you can load a few goods up so he's literally going to shift up stuff from his uh, from his uh, his uh, main depot which is why he starts at level two so he can put more trucks there but if you like world war ii as the theme if you like war games and are looking for something that's a bit different there isn't dudes on the map fighting each other then I can really recommend this. It's a it's a it's a good game, good art, um, and yeah, it's 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 great. So uh, that's it for now. Um, thanks for listening to me ramble on yet again. One day I might make one of these videos where I'm coherent, but where will be the fun in that? Bye for now.